Hey guys, Squirtle here, and today I'm bringing you another Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 gameplay using the SCAR and an MP9? I think it's an MP9 at least. But anyways, today's commentary is about how to get better at Call of Duty or any first person shooter really. Now, this commentary is not about becoming a Call of Duty god, it's about improving. With that being said, I'm going to start by mentioning that there's no quick fix or magic cure to not doing well. Some of these tips may help you out tremendously, but improving at COD, like most things, takes time and effort. But enough of my preamble. My first tips are going to relate to the things I think people overlook a lot, and that's game setup and options. My first tip is to use a smaller yet still good quality TV. That way, everything's in your peripheral. If you're using a big TV, make the margins bigger because it pulls the radar in closer so that you don't have to physically turn your head to see it. I know some people love using big TVs, but from personal experience, I do way better on a smaller TV. Next is switch to tactical button layout. I know this may be hard to get used to, but in the long run, it helps you a lot. I guess this is also detrimental to your knifing capabilities in the beginning, but I promise you get used to it and you almost knife just as fast as before you switch to it. My next tip is choose sensitivity wisely. Sensitivity impacts your accuracy and speed, so find a sensitivity you are comfortable with. If that's a two, so be it. And if you want to raise your sensitivity, don't jump from 2 to 10. You'll have much better results if you master it step by step. So go by 1 or 2 first and keep building up once you've gotten comfortable with the last one. Next, I want to talk about brightness. Now, this is sort of a cheap move, but turn your brightness up a little more than necessary. It'll help a lot if you're not good at distinguishing a camper from a darker covered spot. Last but not least, utilize sound. I know everyone says this, but it can't be stressed enough. The next set of tips are aimed at helping you sharpen up your skills. First off, experiment with different weapons, perks, etc. It may not be what you're used to, but you may have to pick up a gun off the ground one day. Don't just stick to one set class. Try to use other guns, attachments, perks, kill streaks, all that good stuff so you can be the well-rounded Call of Duty player. <laughs> Next is start out with a gun that's not automatic or use one every once in a while. I started playing Call of Duty using a non-automatic gun and it helped a lot with my reflexes and accuracy. By the time I switched to an automatic weapon, I really improved at acquiring targets. My next tip is to utilize private matches and combat training. First off, there's no pu real public record to tarnish, so it's a lot more relaxed. But I also want to mention that it's still important to play online because people react differently than the computer. Lastly, play the game. That is the best tip to improve your skill. The more you play, the better you get. Your reflexes will get better, your reaction time will get better, and overall your skill will get better. Since skills aren't always what necessarily wins a game, the bulk of my tips fall under the category of tactic and technique. The first tip under this category deals with the maps. The main point is know the maps. Know the kill zones or the danger zones. Know the spawns at least generally. Be aware of all the places the enemy can be coming from. Every little corner. Know the maps like the back of your hand. <laughs> okay, you don't have to know every single inch of every single map. But the faster you learn where the enemy is most likely to be, the faster you can plan your line of attack. Eventually, it'll almost become instinct. My next tip is to flank. Flank, flank, flank. Seriously though, it gives you so much more of an advantage when you're coming from behind. <laughs> Don't take that the wrong way. But <laughs> moving on, my next tip is to rush cautiously. I don't know about you guys, but for me, I can't stay in one spot for too long without getting bored. I don't know how those campers do it. But on the other hand, you can't run out into the middle of the map like a chicken with its head cut off. You have to find that middle ground. By all means, rush. Just don't do it stupidly. Watch your corners and know when to hold back a little. Play like you're playing free-for-all, where you always have to pay attention to your surroundings and all the corners. But 
Even if you don't feel comfortable running and gunning, stick to the outsides of the map or hold down an area rather than camping. My next tip is to use cover, but don't hide behind anything that can blow up for too long, unless you've blown it up first or it's already exploded. Because we all know being blown up by a car or a barrel is just a stupid and not fun way to die. On the other hand, put a couple of bullets into barrels and cars, enough to get them flaming. Maybe you'll get lucky and get a kill or two later on. Next is to move. If you're engaged in a gunfight, don't stand still. Drop shot, jump, zigzag, just move. Yeah, it's annoying as shit when the other team is doing it, but it does make you a harder target and in turn helps you survive. My next tip is to play accordingly. By this I mean plan tactics and routes according to map, game type, and well, you and your comfort level. There are just some guns, perks, and tactics that work better for some maps and game types than others. Assault rifles and light machine guns are better for accuracy and range on bigger maps with long lines of sight, while the speed of submachine guns and shotguns at close range are better for smaller maps where most of your battles are gun-on-gun fights. Don't forget that you should be comfortable with the gun you use and choose proficiencies, attachments, and kill streaks that are suited for the way you play. My next tip is to watch your mini-map and keep an eye on the radar. It's good to know where your teammates are and even better to know where the enemies are. Also, if you don't know where your enemies are, are, which is probably a good majority of the time, don't spin around corners or into buildings. A lot of people do this without thinking. I know I do it without thinking sometimes, but you'll gain a huge advantage if you take your time and aim down your sights when turning the corner or walking into a room. Otherwise, you're not much of a match for the guy who already has his sights up while you're still running. Also, do flash checks and stun checks on dom points and bombs, through windows and doors, around corners, down halls, etc. It helps at pointing out enemies as well as giving you an advantage by disorientating them. This brings me to my next point. Use your equipment, not just your gun. This goes hand in hand with planting claymores and bouncing beddies in good, efficient places. <laughs> next up is learn to use the iron sights, at least for some guns. It opens up slots for much better attachments instead of red dot. I mean, if you're a person who can't aim without it, then use red dot. But if you're an okay aimer without it and don't have to rely on it, iron sights are your best friend. Besides, I feel like red dot emphasizes flinch and recoil on some guns, but that's just my opinion. Next tip is to aim. Yes, I know many of you are probably like WTF, obviously, but there are a lot of people who, when new to the game, aren't good at aiming and rely only on hip fire. Next is to master and know how to execute hip fire, pre fire, and pre aim. I'm sure everyone knows what hip fire is, pretty much shooting without aiming. This helps a lot when you're close up or taken by surprise. The last two are sort of opposites that can be used to gain an advantage. Pre-firing is firing pretty much before you aim or have gotten your target completely in your sight. It's helpful when you saw someone go into a house and know they're going to pass a window or go out a certain door. I don't know, I hope I explained that alright. And pre-aiming is pretty much aiming down your sights before shooting and sometimes even before you have a target as well. This helps a lot with speed and accuracy. The next tip is to reload when you can, not when you're forced to. Be smart about reloading. Don't wait until your last bullet if you can help it. Two seconds can really save your life. But don't reload when you're unsure if you're left vulnerable to the enemy. This next tip I actually got from my brother, sorta. One day he was playing and he said, if there's anything I've learned from you about this game, it's to know when to give up. And at first I was like, what? (laughs) What are you talking about? Because if any of you guys know me, I rarely ever rage quit. Like, I love staying and trying to prove myself. And I know you guys are probably like, gasp, give up. What do you mean? (laughs) But calm down, guys. I don't mean give up as in rage quit or stop trying, but in the sacrifice one battle for the war type of thing. What I mean is that you don't have to go after every person you see. Be smart and pick your battles wisely. If you get hit marked by a sniper and you have no idea where he is, it's probably not the best idea to poke your little head out and see if you can find and kill him, because chances are he already has you scoped out. Those are the times when you haul ass and run, or find a different route. My next tip I want to share with you is to shoot down air support, even if you have blind eye. Actually, especially if you have blind eye. 
This brings me into the lone wolf versus pack mentality topic. It's okay to be a lone wolf, but for most game types, there has to be some kind of concern or acknowledgement of teammates. I mean, you can't take on a whole team without the help of your teammates. Well, you could. It's just very frustrating. So shooting down air support can be such a great help. Also, if it's more comfortable, travel with teammates. Just don't be the noob that gets his teammates killed, because you're being booted off the island for that shit. The last set of tips I have for you deal with mindset while playing. The first one is to have common sense. I know it sounds silly, but there are more people than you can imagine who seem to be playing the game without using any type of common sense at all. Look, if you're the last left in search against a full team, you obviously don't want to run out into the middle of the map. Just be smart. My next tip is play to win and never get too comfortable, even if you feel like you've got the game in the bag. I've been in countless games where one team has been dominating pretty much the whole game and then started losing the last 30 seconds. My next tip is one of the hardest ones. Don't let others get to you. Disregard the rude comments, or better yet, let them fuel your will to do better. There's always going to be those people who will call everyone who does better than them a camper or try hard, and everyone who does worse than them a total noob. But you have to learn to not let it get to you. People say things out of anger and pride, but don't quit or give up. Most of all, play for yourself. Don't try to keep up with others or impress them. Aim to impress yourself and be proud of yourself. If there's no self-motivation or if you're not having fun, don't play Call of Duty. There's plenty of other games that you might like better. My last tip is if they don't work, then forget all these tips and just play the game. I know it's contradictory, but don't take it too seriously. Have fun and you will get better eventually. The first step to being good at something is sucking at it first. Not always, but for the most part, you know what I mean. So don't feel bad about doing bad. If it makes you feel any better, I don't think anyone could possibly be worse than I was when I first started playing. I mean, I'm talking painful to watch bad, like knifing the air and taking five minutes to kill someone walking in circles around me bad. <laughs> in the words of one of my friends, I was an easy target. And of course it was often rage inducing and there were times when I got frustrated and wanted to give up and never play again, but I didn't. And I may not be the best player or anywhere near it, but I'm way better than I was and I still continue to get better. It took me months to even be decent, but hey, now I use it to release frustration instead of getting frustrated every time I play. But frustration ruins your concentration sometimes. I know there are some people who play at their prime when they're really mad. But then again, there's others who just play even worse. So relax and don't forget to have fun. I might actually make a video on how to have more fun playing Call of Duty. But moving on, skills will come with time. Learn from your mistakes and improve on what you already do well. It may take a while, but you'll get there, so don't stress. I hope these tips helped a little and that you enjoyed this video. If you did or didn't, let me know. I love getting feedback from you guys. But for now, this has been another commentary. Squirtle out. <laughs> that was really bad. Bye, guys.